Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Feminine to Project. And thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I have another fantastic guest with me today. His name is Zachary Parker Harris. And Parker creates masterminds for entrepreneurs and started his first company at the age of 17, became a board member for multiple nonprofits, and was recruited by the President of the United States to speak at leadership conferences across the country. At the age of 20, he almost died in a near-fatal car accident and made a choice to walk the people out of his life who were taking advantage of him and start fresh. At 23, he landed his dream job working for a Fortune 100 technology company doing operations and strategy. He eventually started a, a mastermind modeled after Benjamin Franklin, which became his business and mission. Today, he leads Junto Global, which serves and support to entrepreneurs to build successful businesses and lives. Parker, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. It's my pleasure, Cheryl. I really appreciate you having um, spending your time with us and telling us your story. So starting a business at the age of 17, you know, a lot of us didn't even know what the heck we were doing at the age of 17. You know, for me, I, I wish there was a bigger story or reason why around it, but it was very practical in that there was things that I wanted in life and they weren't going to be given to me. It was very clear at a younger age. So towards my, you know, early, you know, 11, 12, 13 years old, I started asking the people around me what I could do to help them that they would be willing to pay me for. And, you know, started, started making, you know, making money to buy my first car when I was, when I was 15, which I, which I restored and, and so I think that that was, was part of the drive for me. Mm -hmm. And so then I, 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 what was it like to be recruited by the president of the United States? It was surreal. Like I didn't understand what was happening when it was happening. It was an organization uh, that he started called Freedom's Answer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, f for me, it was, it was part of a larger story of, finding my voice and, and choosing a path that was outside of what everyone around me was doing. And so mm -hmm. I got really involved in the YMCA and, and they had a program called Youth in Government. And it just led to me figuring out a lot about myself and what I thought. And, and I just really went all in on that journey. And it led to some really cool opportunities and places that I never expected. But did it like kind of like knock you off balance a little bit when it's like, hey, I'm the president of the United States or one of his staff members called you and contacted you. What did you think? You know, I think it's 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 like most things in life when we when we actually earn something or get something to me, like it often makes sense. Like in business, mm -hmm. when when we earn a client or or you know, when we when we earn business usually we have gone above and beyond to earn that opportunity where it wasn't, you know, just, just by chance or, or by luck where it was like, it was like, I, I earned this and this makes sense. And I mm -hmm. think that that's, that's where I was, but I also didn't realize fully what that opportunity was and what, what the story that I was creating, like I was, still a teenager and I just want you know part of me also just wanted to have friends and there weren't a lot of people that were interested in these type of things at a young age and this was before a lot of the social media and technology so it was a little bit maybe more challenging to to meet people that were interested in these type of things and then stay connected mm -hmm. so part of this journey I think is really isolating and I would even compare it to the business journey as well where at a certain point, it's like, hey, it's all on me and I can bring on team members and, and delegate things. But at the end of the day, it's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that can be a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's why I think these type of, you know, building a community and a mm -hmm. success team that supports my goals, like that, that's really where things started to to move for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I think just being that young, I mean, to have the confidence to be able to step into that type of a position, were you, were you 
concerned about that? Or did you just think, okay, this is what I, I'm hired to do and I'll figure it out and everything's going to be fine? I mean, I think there was a combination of like being naive as well. I was, mm -hmm. again, a teenager that grew up in, you know, a, an environment where I, I saw the world, but I was still very safe. And, mm -hmm. and I, I think I was a little naive to politics in, in some ways as well. I think politics is a very interesting game that I, once I started getting exposed to it, through that process, I was like, whoa, I don't, I don't really want to learn to play this game. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's part of where business became like, that's the thing for me was realizing the substance, like the value pe people doing business based on doing what you say you're going to do versus mm -hmm. politics to me was a little bit different. Um, and I just, I resonated with one more than the other. Yeah, I guess in politics, you can say anything you want and do whatever you want. And you don't have to be account held accountable, but I guess that's just a little bit of a cynical streak in me, as opposed to being in business, uh, you really have to be held, you have to be accountable for what you're doing. I like to build solutions that make mm -hmm. people's lives better. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, without going into too much detail, when you start, you know, getting involved in some of these leadership programs, global leader, like global uh, leadership, National Youth Leadership Conference, Global Youth Leadership Conference, some of these like conferences where they bring together some some leaders like this, you know, they they start teaching you how to like uh, add things to bills to sabotage bills. And like just the, the level at which these games are played was just like, whoa, like we're not really solving the problem, we're creating a problem. And so you know, I, I know this is like probably not the conversation that you expected, but I think that learning to like, where do we, where can we leverage our time to create the maximum in, like impact is a really personal decision that we, mm -hmm. that we get to make in our life. And, and sometimes not making that decision is also its own decision in that maybe we're dissipating our energy and, and not really creating any impact. Mm -hmm. Actually, I loved it. I think that's a very valuable point um, that you made. So thank you for that. Yeah, I, that, that there's so many personal decisions with business around who do I want to serve? Like what problem do I want to solve? How much do I want to charge for that, like solving that problem? Like what does what that relationship with the client look like? And how, like, what is a brand? What, how do I communicate? Like there's just so many things that are that are personal that I think the, per, you know, the personal development piece that, that your show talks about is, is so important because in order to answer those questions, I think it takes a larger journey of awareness and, and mm -hmm. personal development and growth. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about awareness, you mean like introspection and self-awareness and that type of thing? That's what, yeah, that's, I guess so. <laughs> it, it, what <laughs> other types of awareness are there? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's a good question, right? I, I think I, I I heard that Socrates or or one of those guys, Aristotle, <laughs> said that uh, you know, know yourself, like like knowing yourself is true power. Or, you know, I, there's there's I think a saying that goes back thousands of years around like the the power of knowing mm -hmm. yourself. My understanding it's actually from the Luxor Temple in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a really hard journey to describe to to someone mm -hmm. but it's 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 I think it gets talked about by different different people in different ways around the way that we communicate with ourselves, like learning to be aware of what that conversation looks like mm -hmm. I think journaling potentially relates to this and just build you know mindfulness gets talked about and a lot of different habits can fall up under under mindfulness but I think it's these things are like easy to talk about. The process of actually going about doing them is potentially less, <laughs> like more challenging and almost like kung fu or, or karate, like like martial arts, right? Where it's mm -hmm. like a lot of one punch, one punch, one punch, ten thousand times, a hundred thousand times, and then there's like a breakthrough on the other side that creates this shift that then. Mm -hmm breaks through a plateau to another place that we never expected to be. That's really interesting because um, I was just telling another guest this a few few weeks ago. Uh, that's how I problem solve because 
you know, I, I, I'm not somebody who can meditate. I can't sit still and just kind of clear my mind because I just can't do it. But if I stand up and I do some of the, um, the kihon, the katas that, you know, practice and it, it like, that is what, when all of my problems are solved, because through that movement and I'm not thinking about anything else. And that's when, you know, it's like, I get all of these like light bulbs go off in my head. You know, I, I, I part of, part of my journey in college when I actually d decided to commit to that experience is I studied finance and like the business mm -hmm. stuff, but I also got really involved in like the spiritual side. I had grown up in traditional Catholic education environments. Mm -hmm. And, and so starting to study like Eastern philosophy was a really mm -hmm. powerful, like new paradigm shift for me. Mm -hmm. And to understand the way that monks thought about it was that the meditation was happening all the time mm -hmm. you know it was like a living meditation and and even when you start going back into different books or scripture like what was valued was the ongoing relationship the walking mm -hmm. with god versus mm -hmm. the <laughs> you know the grand prayer the grand sacrifice it was the mm -hmm. so and i think that relationship you know without going too spiritual like is a very powerful frame on that is just that ongoing relationship with ourself and actually mm -hmm. being aware of it. And in my life, what I see is people that don't have that awareness, there's usually some sort of significant health issue that mm -hmm. is that starts to manifest mm -hmm. and potentially even make it more difficult to build that relationship with self because mm -hmm. it's like, then there's like a pain in this other thing. Mm -hmm. So this yeah, is well, just my some, own experience. Sometimes no. self-introspection can be very intimidating because you don't know what you're going to find. And, and the ability to assign, assign meaning of what is found is also so powerful mm -hmm. and part of the art of that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're right. I really didn't expect this conversation to go in this direction because I figured it would be a little bit more business oriented. So I love the fact that you're able to bring all of this in you know, as a business person, and we're going to get into that, of course, too, a little bit later, but especially when we're talking about the spirituality, when you had your car accident, you were 20 years old, near fatal accident, uh, I would imagine that that would have some impact on either your perspective, your spirituality, or your um, view, the way you look at life and your perspective. For me, everything after that moment is like a bonus in in mm -hmm. a lot of ways where you know, now it's it's all a get to and not a have to. And it's like what I make of it. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful no one was hurt in that accident other than other than me. Mm -hmm. Um and I and I'm glad that I assigned meaning to that situation that I wasn't the victim, but the hero. And then I had the opportunity the responsibility, the power to make decisions that then, you know, could change my life. And I can say that that did not happen. Like the decisions happened quickly, but the change didn't happen quickly. It was, mm -hmm. you know, 18 months, two years of a lot of loneliness, a lot of regrets, a lot of cleaning things up, you know, and then being very careful on who I brought into my inner mm -hmm. circle and who I allowed close to me mm -hmm. after that point. And I think that, discernment that ability to curate ended up becoming a gift and a strength mm -hmm. that you know I still possess mm -hmm. so what was that like when you decided to you know walk the people out of your life who were not you know it was not a good relationship for both or for you uh did you get a lot of resistance did you get a lot of anger what how did people react um you know it, this was you know 15 years ago now. Um, so my recollection is probably not a hundred percent clear. Some of the conversations are more clear than other conversations. And I, and I will say that, you know, I, I think there were tears. Most of them were probably from me. <laughs> you know, I think these were difficult conversations that I, I had made and, 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 and was just trying to communicate from a place of love. And I think some of the people, it was so toxic that the community, the conversations didn't happen. It was like, hey, there's there's no there's no reason to like this is not this is not good, 
you know, regardless of what is said. And then some that were good, it was like, Hey, not, you know, not right now. Like I'm, I'm going to, you know, make a change. And then I think that's also an element of leadership too, that it, mm-hmm. it, that sometimes doesn't get talked about where we potentially have to take that, make that choice alone. Mm-hmm. And then eventually other people decide to take that path as well. Mm-hmm. And then contact us later and are like, Hey, like, what are you doing now? And it's like, it's almost an element of making a sacrifice of that immediate relationship in order to make a better decision and, and lead and leadership mm-hmm. is something that I think is also like, Oh, I want to be a leader, but then actually being a leader is, is not as sunshine and rainbows as it sounds. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to be the leader of your own life. That's where it starts. Yeah, exactly. And I had, um, a very dear friend. We were the very best and dearest friends for almost 30 years. And the relationship became so toxic because she became so dark. And I mean, it was just a gradual shift and it it was, it was, it was ugly. It was bad. And I finally just had to break up with her. And how do you tell somebody who's been your best and dearest friend for 30 years that you haven't liked them for the past 15 and you've been trying to figure out how to break up with them for the past 10 And, you know, I had like a trauma in my life and it was like, you know what, it's time. And I didn't even have the conversation with her. I just, you know, it's like, it's not worth it. I'm not going to put myself through it. I just kind of, you know, walked away and that might've been a coward's way of doing it, but it was, it was the way I needed to do it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, assigning meaning is again, so powerful, right. And like how we, and and so I think there's there's no right way to do it. There's there's energy that mm-hmm. there's and there's energy that can sometimes get stored. Like I'm sure I've, again, I'm trying to like learn to release it and communicate things. To me, even writing a letter to a friend, being like, hey, you know, this happened. This is still going to happen. <laughs> Nothing's going to change because I'm sending this letter, but I just wanted to share it with you. There's a lot of different ways. I've I've I was thinking about the integrity piece that you focus on as well and what i what i've realized in a lot of mastermind conversations is that usually you know 98 percent of the time the the best thing i would say if not 100 i'm gonna just clarify right 98 <laughs> percent of the time if not 100 percent of the time the best thing is like what's best for both people you know like what's the what's the best resolution for both people and and that's i think a, a hard thing to find but sometimes it can be pretty simple too mm-hmm. So then you brought up the mastermind conversations. What made you decide to go into, you know, developing this mastermind? Did you have a light bulb moment or was it a gradual uh, look into some of the different things that you can do for business and to help people? How did that come about? Yeah, Cheryl, it did happen gradually. I I started getting really involved after I made that decision of like walking people out of my mm-hmm. life and being really careful who I who I let in. I looked at with those those people that I let in, they were there were some patterns on where they were spending their time. And they were spending their time in different organizations that they didn't have to spend their time on. And they were taking leadership roles in those organizations. And, and there was usually a specific set, like a role type where it was called vice president of professional affairs or some version of this, right? Where they would go out to members of the business community and bring them to speak to students and be that liaison, if mm-hmm. you will. And so I started taking on that role in different organizations that I that I decided to be a part of three of them. Mm -hmm. And, and then over time, I started just doing that on my own outside of any organization, just creating like our own nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It was, we didn't formalize it, but it was just, uh, we brought in someone that we would want to learn from. And then a group of people that were all kind of go-getters and like Mm -hmm. making their own way, like would gather to like learn Mm -hmm. from that person very informally, if you will. And over time, we started seeing this thing where the speaking part was less valuable <laughs> than the direct interaction, the ability to be like, hey, this is what I'm going through. Like, what do you think about that? And then the speaker was like, we, what we realized was that other people that were going through what we were going through right now and were either succeeding or even failing, like that conversation was more valuable than 
someone that went through it 30 years ago and maybe is now unconsciously competent at -hmm. that thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Or just it's a different situation. The internet's here. Like just things have changed, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the light bulb moment. And I was at the same time reading a book that Benjamin Franklin wrote, his autobiography, the first autobiography. And he Mm -hmm. talked about a group that he uh, created called Junto and all these things connected at once. And and we just brought people together to have this conversation around topics that were really interesting to us. So when they're topics that are interesting to you, are they always business related or do they go into, you know, personal life and relationships or that type of thing? Such a great, interesting question, because what I've seen in mastermind conversations is that people's success in business is almost in direct causation or correlation to their ability to evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. And so what we see is, you know, 60, 70% of the time when someone thinks they have a business issue, it's not actually a business issue. It's something potentially deeper underneath that around maybe how they're assigning meaning (laughs) at that given Mm -hmm. time right? Or or just uh, a limiting belief or a lack of alignment between their their purpose and their, their vision. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of different pieces, I think, to personal development to really think accurately about it. But what we do is use questions to get to root cause. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of times what we see is that the business issue is not a business issue. And once we get clear about what the issue is, the person can often solve it themselves. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees, but when somebody else can kind of lead you uh, to lead you out of it. Well, I, you know, at this point, I'm just convinced that there's a reason why there's not only one person on earth. Mm-hmm. And, and that maybe there wasn't meant, like, I think that even personal development in this journey needs to involve like other people <laughs> and and we can't even become the best version of ourselves in isolation in a vacuum mm-hmm. it requires collisions and input and challenges from other people because the biggest breakthroughs that we see is when people realize that they're the problem and that they're wrong <laughs> and like that they're they're just trying to like hold on to this story so strongly and that's why their reality is the way that it is and when they rewrite the story they can then rewrite reality Mm -hmm. well there's nothing like the human connection and i really believe that that's one of the reasons why i do the podcast and i continue to do it because i think when we can talk to each other we can share stories, listen to each other, you know, it opens up the lines of communication and it creates such wonderful connections. And I think that we're living in a time when society and, you know, the powers that be are trying to separate us and put us into, you know, convince us that we are, you know, each an individual entity and into little groups. And that's not true. We need each other. We're human beings. We're people. We're social creatures. One of, there's a thought leader, his name's Peter Drucker. He's, he's a famous like management consultant that wrote a number of books and, and was like the leader of presidents and, and, and corporations. And he said this thing once is like, in the future, in the future, when histories are writing about our time and, and they're marveling at it. What they're mar- going to marvel at is not about technology and not about the internet internet of things. They're gonna they're gonna like look at there's a change in the human condition, and for the first time in human history, people have a growing number of choices and options, and people are completely unprepared for that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I I think that that's that's one of the things right is it's like there's just so many options and we there's technology we're just we're not living in this world where we have lions tigers and bears attacking us and we just have to work together to survive right mm-hmm. it's like this like new thing but it's still tribal in some ways and 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 i think even entrepreneurs need their tribe mm-hmm. absolutely so 
when you talk about the mastermind and, you know, and of course it's more business focused or that's kind of like the, the focal point, but we were even talking about this before we, you know, hopped on the, the recording that how can people benefit? Because from what I'm hearing from you and what my own experiences have been with a mastermind, that amount of communication and just that, um, you know, that group support and having somebody else being able to help you look at something in a different way from a different perspective is is very powerful rather than being, again, isolated in your own little bubble, trying to figure things out for yourself. So how about masterminds? How can that help people who really aren't in business, but how can all of um, this community and this communication impact their personal lives, their relationships to help for the better? Yeah, that's a great question. I might I might not answer it with this response, so feel free to to ask me it again. But I, I what I see is that masterminds are for people who have problems that are no longer Googleable. If that makes any sense, right? Like, they're no say that one more time. They're uh, they have problems that are no longer Googleable that they can't <laughs> Google. Okay. No wonder right? why. I, no wonder why I didn't catch it the first time. Yep, I got it. No longer Googleable. Yeah, right? that's like, a mouthful. It is. It is a little bit. Um, chat GBT, chat GBTable, whatever. Right? Like, <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, you you said the commonality between our members is that they're and Benjamin Franklin had this too. He called it industriousness, mm -hmm. like this this focus on building something, creating something, doing something. He called it industriousness. Today it's called entrepreneurship. And so the commonality between our members is they've decided to take ownership of their life and their time and their like their energy and like build something that they have responsibility for. And often there's a support team of a foundation of a support team, if not a full support team that's been established through that. And those people, you can't tell them to not talk about business. It's impossible. Like entrepreneurs, like that's that's how they think. That's how they talk. They go for coffee. They create two businesses talking to another entrepreneur over coffee. Mm -hmm. So definitely we do talk about business. I would say that we don't limit it to business as a result of it. Our framework is more holistic. Mm -hmm. Personal development as at that, is at the center of our framework. Mm -hmm. business, health, relationships, contribution, fun. These are all areas that we discuss because at the end of the day, like we want people to live the best life that they can and sacrificing, you know, health, relationships, fun, all for, for business doesn't lead to the life. I think that really anyone wants to live. And, and we've had enough examples, mm -hmm. enough examples of that. I love the holistic approach, and I especially love um, having the focus on health as well, because, of course, as a health and wellness kind of specialist, you know, I think that's so important. And when you are an entrepreneur and you're running your own business, or even if you're just running the household, it's it's really hard work. And one Hopefully. of the things that you, you know, typically is the first thing that goes is as a priority is your health and your wellness, because you're so busy either taking care of your clients, taking care of, um, you know, your employees, taking care of your family that, you know, you're the boss and you've got to keep things going. So if something gets cut and you have to sacrifice something, most of the time it's either, you know, exercise, eating well, you know, um, what's the other, you know, self-care. That's the first thing that goes out the, out the door. I mean, I, I think that that's probably often true for the for the population. Like, I think you know, if I, I've uh, I've spent the last eighteen months traveling the world, and you know, unhealth. I would say that most people are unhealthy compared to healthy um, in in the society. And I don't. I think it goes back to that Drucker quote <laughs> too of just like people not being able to manage themselves because there's just so many options. Um, and even me, I, I get decision fatigue by like 3 p.m like mm -hmm. there's just there's you know there's just so many decisions that i need to make even early on a day where i try to limit decision making towards the end of the day because i'm like this isn't going to go well like no matter what because i've already made enough decisions today so I, it took me a while to build that awareness of like when that happens mm -hmm. um 
where was I going with that? I, I Cheryl, I, I apologize. I lost, I lost that for a second. Oh no, that's okay. What? I was talking about how our health um, sometimes just yes. sort of takes the back okay. seat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know what? What I the what I the pattern that I see is when everything is really hard in business and like it can't get any harder. That's when the the worst thing happens. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, like the only thing that can't happen will happen in that moment, mm -hmm. right? And it's like okay, like th there's you know time to f like fight this, mm -hmm. and if health isn't there at that moment, mm -hmm. I've seen people fold like literally have to get into the car and drive to the doctor for emergency heart surgery because they just had an embolism. Right. And it's like, okay. And now they're out for three months mm -hmm. and it's like, mm -hmm. they just then and, and they lost in that time, their business, you know, shrinks from millions of dollars a month to a hundred thousand a month mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Like it just, the cost of not having that foundation yeah. it's kind of back to that idea of like building life, you know, building your house on sand versus building your house on rock. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. I mean, you no, that's, you can't function. I can't. Yeah. And I think we live in a society where, you know, we all want instant gratification and we don't have a lot of time. So it's a lot easier to just, you know, go to the drive-thru, grab a quick, you know, take out or whatever. And, oh, I'll either go to the gym tomorrow or I'll start hiking, you know, maybe this summer or it's all, it's so easy to put it off, but you know, it's, it's really more of a priority. If you don't have your own health, you're not going to have a healthy business or a healthy family or healthy lifestyle. It, so this is, this is like the point that I, I want to drive home and I don't know exactly how to say it. I'm still wrapping my head around this idea, but successful people, whether they're successful in business, whether they're successful in health, whether they're successful in the re relationships, I think they're good at like, they're good at knowing what they want to happen. Mm -hmm. And then, and then they'll take action to get there and gather data through that process, like gather data to whether they're doing it or not, and then course correct mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. And so that process of whether it's on the health side and tracking macros and like really like learning to track health data whether it's hrv or body mass and 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 then get the result that that we want to get like that process of thinking accurately about something mm -hmm. and summoning resources to accomplish a result that is such a useful skill set and can be channeled to so many things and i think a lot of like even myself i have some grand plans for what i want to accomplish in my life but if i can't set a plan for 48 hours and accomplish that plan, then I can't accomplish a goal over 48 years. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing I'm really working on mastering is like, what do I want to happen over a certain period of time, whether that's six weeks or six months or six mm -hmm. hours, right? Or mm -hmm. six minutes and like taking ownership of that period of time mm -hmm. and making that happen and then starting to build more ability to to do that into whether that's okay i want to make a million dollars or 10 million dollars mm -hmm. or 100 it's like okay well that's the goal mm -hmm. what do i need to do that start gathering data right every day you know what what data i track my net worth right we're tracking cash flow we're tracking mm -hmm. numbers that over time we want to see go up mm -hmm. towards towards bigger goals but if i don't collect that data and then analyze that data to make decisions it's very, it'd be very difficult for me to, to succeed in that. Mm -hmm. I think that same approach can be just done on our life where it's like, okay, what do I want to accomplish this week? Mm -hmm. What do I want to learn this week? What fun mm -hmm. do I want to have this week? Mm -hmm. What goals do I want to achieve this week? What am I going to do to actually achieve those goals? Because everybody wants more money. Everybody wants to lose, you know, lose weight. Everybody mm -hmm. wants a, a, a beautiful significant other and a great family like everybody usually kind of wants the same things traveling the world like mm -hmm. those are that's easy to want the thing the hard thing is to really figure out what i can do to today to get that thing mm -hmm. and that awareness back mm -hmm. to awareness like you know that that takes a method that mm -hmm. a structure that once once things get get in place you know, it's very dangerous what can happen. Mm -hmm. 
I think that some people might think that that's an awful lot of work and kind of exhausting to create like a plan like that. But to me, it helps keep me on track. It helps keep me focused. Again, I have a very busy mind and say, oh, look, a squirrel. And I'm off and running if I see something shiny. But if I can write it down, like what I want to do, and sometimes I don't even have specific end dates, but just writing things down and getting a clear idea of where I want to go and what I want to do. And, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I got a big birthday coming up in two years that has a zero um, and those come faster and faster. And so I'm really thinking very intentionally what I want my life to look like and where I want to be and how I'm going to get there over the next two years to make it happen. Well, I'm interested to hear to hear more um, about what those things are. Maybe we take that offline. <laughs> but I, you know, you said what what like some people would say that that's hard, and I'm saying you know, running a business is way harder than that. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, you know, some people think that they want to run a business because they want the the freedom of time, the freedom <laughs> of location, and the freedom of like money. But I will oh. say that it that is possible, but it is, it is, it is hard to do that. And this is the building blocks. This is the blocking and tackling. This is the chopping wood and carrying, carrying water, carrying water. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I ran my own physical therapy, private practice for 18 years. So yeah, it, it was a lot of work. It's not like, well, you'll have more flexibility and more free time. So for those of you who are Maybe thinking, someday. hey, starting a business is going to be a lot of fun and you have a lot of free time and a lot of flexibility, you're always working. It's like you're always on. But in, in, until we learn how to work, play and rest mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like so, find that find that harmony, if you will, that dance, that cadence. So do you talk about these things too in your mastermind as far as the planning yeah. and yeah? Yeah. Well, so not only do we talk about it, we build structure around it. So part of, part of our process is again, gathering data. So mm -hmm. let's gather a baseline of where does someone think that they're at, mm -hmm. right? In, in money, in relationships, mm -hmm. in their health, like what, mm -hmm. where are they at and what does that mean to them? Like mm -hmm. why, and what would a 10 look like? What, you know, mm -hmm. if we really shot for the stars, what would that look like? And then what's mm -hmm. the next step? Mm -hmm. And, and that's something that we do on intake and then every quarter together mm -hmm. as a mastermind. Mm -hmm. And then every year we'll get together and really look more long-term to realign our plans. Mm -hmm. So how many members do you have and do you um, break it up into smaller groups? How do you organize that? So our, our community is, is a private community. So we don't share all of the details. There's a lot of confidentiality with like who we serve, but we do have hundreds of members across mm -hmm. four continents. Wow. And now if one of the listeners or some of the listeners would like to join your mastermind, I, I mean, is it a group where they can join or? So Junto is not for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. We we so we have an application process. If someone qualifies, mm -hmm. um, and and their business and and where they're at, what they're looking to achieve, and and their their ability to contribute to the mastermind matches what we're looking for, then we mm -hmm. would invite them to to go through a process to see if it's a good fit for them. Excellent, because you don't want to be in a group where you're not, you know contributing or yeah, I can see how it has to be a really good fit. Yeah. Yes. For us, it, this is a mastermind environment. It's not a group coaching environment. I'm not, I'm not a guru. Um, as much as I, I serve, you know, I serve our members and really work to figure out what's going on in their life and what would move the needle, like what's relevant to them. Um, I'm not setting agendas. I'm mm -hmm. facilitating agendas based on what's important and, and urgent to, to our members. Well, you might not be a guru or you might not consider yourself a guru, but I do believe that you have guru qualities. Well, thank you. I'm, I, again, I'm hoping to have a, have a big impact on, uh, on 
an industry that I think is ripe for disruption and and sorely needs it. And I think it will unlock a lot of value, not just not just financially, but also for for humanity. Mm -hmm. So, all right, Parker, where can people find you? How could they get a hold of you, follow you, learn more about the mastermind? Just give us some of the ways that uh, the audience can reach out to you. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. So our our website is junto.global. You can go there, find out some more information um, and, and apply. I'm also active on most social medias under Zachary Parker Harris. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Parker, thank you so much for being here. And before we sign off, do you have any final words of wisdom, insights, tips, anything you want to leave with the listeners? I'm really glad we got to, got to have this conversation today, Cheryl. So thank you for, for allowing me to share some of this. And I hope I'm not coming across preachy. I only am sharing this because I feel passionate because of mistakes that I've made and just the the cost and the benefit of learning some of these things and, and not knowing them at certain times. I think a lot of what we talked about can sound very structured and, and very, like you said, difficult to implement. One of the things that was really fun for me and, and helped me to, to enjoy life more was this idea that life is not a problem to be solved, but an adventure to be lived. Mm. And that reframe really serves me. And I will say though, that adventures are different than vacations in <laughs> that, you know, vacations are meant to be like this very neat, comfortable experience that's very restful and relaxing. And adventures are often meant to have a lot of unexpected twists that are uncomfortable and create growth. <laughs> so hopefully that's something that people want to opt into and make their life an adventure. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much for that. And thank you, Parker, for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your time with us. Likewise, Cheryl. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. And uh, my goodness, what wonderful insights and tips Parker shared with us today. Uh, do go to his website, do uh, check out his social media, and do remember that life is not a problem to be solved, but an adventure to be lived. And that is the way of the Femininja.